Okay, welcome to section 4C, our part two of organic search. So in part one, we basically learned that having a strong presence on Google Organic is a function of several things, good keyword strategy, title tags, description tags, and also image tags. But at the end of the day, the majority of what is going to drive you to the top is going to be really all about the backlinks and how many people are pointing to you as a resource. All about the backlinks. So links are considered a vote of confidence by Google. In the agency world, they call it credibility. And remember, it's quality, not quantity when it comes to your links. Again, they look for links to your website, not only to follow those links to find you, but also to determine more information about you. Does someone else link to your website using words like click here to find designer candy? If so, that gives search engines a clue that your website just might have something to do with designer or candy. So if somebody is going to be linking back to you, please try to get them to use keyword specific um, terminology with respect to that hot link that's linking back. Instead of just saying click here, say click here to find designer candy. Additionally, search engines are going to look at the words wrapped around those outgoing links as well to make sure that it's tied to the topic that your website deals with and it's not something random or something spammy. Okay, backlinks are really important. Uh, most agencies will work at least 50% of their time on their clients trying to work those backlinks. But again, the one thing you don't want to do is go over to the dark side and start doing spammy things and buying backlinks. Google will figure it out, they'll punish you, and I'll give you three examples at the end of this chapter. Remember, the greater the number of links from other sites pointing to a website, the more popular the site is, therefore the higher quality resource for search engines. But it's better to have a few quality sites than to have hundreds of spammy sites linking to you. The use of those link farms are definitely going to get you banned from Google without a doubt. So again, link building is not fun. A lot of agencies will bring in summer interns to help them work on backlinks for their clients. Um, but again, it's well worth it at the end of the day. Here is a resource that you guys can check out of giving you some link building strategies. Again, one way you can try to work out legitimate backlinks is to write articles, submit them out there, etc. So when Rhonda first started our consulting business, I was writing lots of articles for her. I created some free software, whatever it would take to get companies and websites to link back to Rhonda's website. There's four types of links that I want to go over with you. Um, we have inbound links, outbound links, reciprocal links, and one-way links. Inbound links are links that originate from an external website. Pretty easy. Outbound links are links from your page pointing to another page on an external domain. So inbound links are also our backlinks. Reciprocal links are when both your page and a page on another website link to each other. So reciprocal links are bind, bounded by the page. One-way links are when either site one links to site two or site two links to site one, but does not receive a reciprocal link from the same page it links to. Links are considered reciprocal if they bind the pages, not the site. So I'm just giving you these are strict definitions. So here's an example, linking scenario one. This is going to be the best in Google's eyes for site one. You've got site two pointing to site one, but site one is not having to point back to site two at all. So again, this is a great backlink for site one. Um, again, assuming it's not a spammy or paid backlink. This is going to be okay, not as good as the prior diagram for site one, because now Google's looking at it and thinking, okay, maybe a phone call took place and somebody said, you point to me, I point to you, kind of, but at least it's not purely reciprocal. This is the worst situation. This is considered reciprocal, where the mutual links are binding the pages. Again, Google is not going to like this at all, and it could totally negate the effect of site two pointing to site one because site one is pointing right back to that exact same page. Now, if we take a look at that and I change it now and I tell you that site one is Drake Direct and site two is the American Marketing Association, you know what? This is probably fine. Google's going to look at it and say, 
oh, you know what? The American Marketing Association, oh, I trust them. They have a lot of credibility with me. You know what? I'm not concerned. And I'm going to go ahead and let Drake Direct have the benefit of the fact that the American Marketing Association is pointing to them. So again, it also it's not quite as easy as what I was saying. It also depends upon who's pointing to who. So again, would we consider these reciprocal or one-way links? So these would be considered one-way links because they're not binding the page. Would these be considered reciprocal or one-way links? These are definitely considered reciprocal because the pages are bound. So different types of links can influence your link popularity. The type of link that mostly influences your link popularity, again, are those inbound one-way backlinks. Sometimes it's assumed that outbound links might decrease a website's link popularity. That's wrong. It doesn't really matter how many outbound links you have going off as long as off your website, as long as you're not doing anything spammy. Okay. While outbound links do nothing to increase your link popularity, you do not give away any link popularity when you link to another site. Regarding those URL shorteners like tiny URL or bit.ly, uh, again, not to worry. Google knows how to read such links and will pass on any link juice from such pages as deemed necessary via the redirect. Again, if you don't know about URL shorteners like bit.ly or tiny URL, I use bit.ly. I suggest you Google it to find out what their purpose is. Again, I use bit.ly to shorten links to articles that I'm tweeting because, again, remember, I'm only allowed 140 characters in a tweet, and I don't want to use up all those with the URL of an article. So I'll use bit.ly to shorten it. And then the benefit of using bit.ly to shorten it also is bit.ly will then give me stats on how many people, and that's a unique URL just for me that it created, that I can actually go in and see. You know, I can see how many people liked my tweet, favorited or retweeted it, but if I want to know how many people clicked on that article I tweeted, then I can go to Bitly and find that out. So search engine algorithm potentially built to give inbound links more value than others. Simple links are not given the same weight as links with the following advantages. Links from pages deemed to be more relevant in terms of topic and theme. So what that means is that again, if there is a link coming into my page from a website that is more similar to mine, that will probably be more weight for me than a link coming from a website that's eh, not quite the same as what my website is. Links labeled with more keyword rich anchor text and surrounded by relevant descriptions. So if I got a link coming into me that has a lot of good keyword, let's let's take Rhonda's database, database marketing consulting agency. Let's say there's a link Sorry, that was my cat meowing again. Um, so again, let's take Rhonda's example over database marketing consulting firm. So if she's got a couple of links coming into her website, pointing to her, and one has more keyword rich anchor text surrounding it, talking about databases and marketing and targeting and modeling, and the other one doesn't, probably the one that has all the good keyword rich text around it will probably be more have more weight uh, than the one that doesn't. Links from pages with a higher Google page rank. So basically what this is saying is if you've got two links coming into Rana's website and one of which Google thinks highly of, obviously that is going, that website will pass on more clout or juice to Rhonda than the one that doesn't have as, as high a value in Google's eyes. Um, again, links that originate from content pages rather than linking pages. Again, so if you've got, again, two links coming into Rhonda, uh, one of them is from a page where hers is the only outgoing link, and it's on a page full of good, rich copy talking about database marketing and targeting, and hers is the only outgoing link going off of it, versus you got another link coming into Rhonda's website. And when you look at that page, there's like 20 other outgoing links going to other database company websites. Well, Google's not going to give much merit to that link coming into Rhonda, but will give a lot of merit to the one that's coming to her on its own on that page that has a lot of good, rich copy. So does Google keep track of top paid directories? Uh, of course they do because they've got to figure out what's going on with those links. They need to make sure that they're legitimate uh, earned links and not paid directory links or paid links or spammy links. 
So Google certainly pays close attention to that. What if, again, you know, Rhonda has bought, let's say, an ad on the American Marketing Association's website to be in their directory? Again, now what will the American Marketing Association do? to ensure that it tells Google, hey, you know, I'm not really endorsing Rhonda's website, you know, just be careful here. Uh, again, so what the AMA will do, because it wants to play by the rules, is it will use what's called a nofollow tag associated with that link on the code on the page where that outgoing link is. So it's just a little tag that goes right behind the URL of Rhonda's website off of the American Marketing Association. So that's what you will do to tell Google, please don't think I'm endorsing Rhonda's website at all. Um, because the uh, posts on Facebook, Twitter, and blog comments all have no follow tags associated with outgoing links, Google and other search engines will also ignoring those as well to determine the importance of the pages that you were pointing to. So here's the problem that existed. You know, we we're all, you know, a few years ago starting to post articles on Twitter and Facebook and blogs, which were pointing back to different websites and resources and things along those lines. Now, all of those had no follow tags automatically put on them behind the scenes without you even realizing it. However, the problem is now that we are using social media so much more to gather information, again, Google and Bing and Yahoo are kind of having to figure out how to work around that. And they can't really ignore that fact anymore in terms of understanding the importance of those particular articles and links and things along those lines. So if you want more information on that, you can certainly click on this article. What social signals do Google and Bing really count? So how do you determine your backlinks? Well, there's a couple of tools out there that you can use. Um, one of them is SEO Profiler. So I'm going to want you guys to set up a free account. And again, you'll need that for your homework anyway. And they let you use it free for a certain number of days. And it's a great tool. Uh, and among other things, it will tell you how many backlinks you have, how many other websites are pointing to you, which is kind of cool. So it's also a competitive tool as well. <clears throat> So within here, you can see I'm typing in UMSL and WashU, and we can see the number of backlinks. So UMSL has 139,900 other websites pointing back to it. WashU has 161,620 backlinks pointing back to it. So we can see WashU has more than UMSL. So again, I think what I'm having you do for homework is compare UMSL to NYU in terms of backlinks. When we talk about internal linking structure, totally different than external linking structure. So internal is just having good navigation pages linked together properly from kind of a user experience perspective. But again, you do want to be a little strategic about it. You know, link to less important pages on your site from more important pages. You know, make sure important pages are not buried too deep in the website. You don't want to have to click five times to get to a very important page. Bring it up closer to the top right off the main domain. So let's talk about that Google rank. What defines how well Google thinks of your page? Just what does it think of it? Um, again, it's, it's a trademark term. Again, you can use the PR checker to determine the page rank of any page. It's put on a scale of 1 to 10. Keep in mind, though, it's much more complicated than that. So if I go to PR checker and I type in www.nyu.edu, we'll see that NYU has an 8 out of 10. I'm going to have you do the same thing for UMSL for part of your homework. So that think of it as a quiz score. You know, not too many sites have 9s or 10s. Obviously, Google is a 10. I think the White House has a 10. Um, not a lot of websites have a 10. <clears throat> Most experts agree that it's really based on the um, exponential logarithmic scale, which basically what that means is, you know, it's not really a 0 through 10. It's a 0.15 through a 1 trillion or whatever that is. Um, so what this basically means is it means to move from a 7 to an 8 is exponentially more difficult than to move from a 3 to a 4. So the further and further you go up that scale, the harder and harder it's going to get. <clears throat> Again, for each page, the page rank can be different. So every page has its own page rank, and then there's also a page rank for the domain. 
So the formula for doing this is looks worse than what it is. I've got a YouTube video, which I'll have you guys watch. I'm not going to go over it in detail on this slide. You can watch the video. Make sure you know how to do it because you will be quizzed on it uh, and you will have homework on it. So basically, all it's doing is it's taking a look at every backlink that's coming into you. And again, if if site, if, if uh, a particular website is pointing to me and it's also pointing to another website, what Google is going to do is it's in a, and let's say it has a page rank, that website that's pointing to me has a page rank of four. Google is going to give me half the juice and it's going to give the other website half the juice. Let's say there's another website that's pointing to me and they're pointing to four other people. Okay. And let's say they have a page rank of eight. Google is going to divvy it up against me and the other three people. So we each get one quarter of the juice. So that's really how it's working um, at a very high level. So in the video, I will take you through that very carefully and I'll make sure it's, it's painless. A couple more things here, a couple more slides. Search engines do not like tricks, so do not try to fool Google. Not going to work. Cloaking is something that uh, BMW did a few years ago, and they got stripped out of the Google index for a full year. So it's a programming technique that can identify robots and show them things that regular visitors don't see. So remember I said before, you know, Google doesn't really like a lot of pictures and a lot of flash, blah, blah, blah. So some people have actually gone in and said, oh, if a robot's coming in to look at the website like Google or Yahoo, um, you know what, let's redirect them over here and show them a website that has lots of text and not a lot of pictures. And if, oh, here comes Perry, oh, let's shift them over here and show them to the website that has a lot of pictures and pretty stuff. Again, that's fooling Google because Google's trying to rank your website based on the content you're presenting to users. And if you're not showing them what you're presenting to users, then it can't rank it properly in its eyes and it doesn't like it and you're going to get in trouble. Duplicating content, again, you cannot duplicate copy. So again, if you've got, let's take an example, let's say you write a blog piece and you've got a few different blogs and you want to put it on your website too and you want to put it on this blog and you want to put it on that blog, again, Google's going to figure it out, look at it as duplicate copy, and again, you're going to get punished as a result of it. Uh, it does not like duplication of content. It also does not like duplication and repeating words over and over again too many times on a page. Um, again, so although you want to have good density of your keywords on a page, you don't want to stuff. So it's got to be natural. Invisible text. Another thing, which again, we used to do years ago, and it's so easy to get SEO years ago. So what I used to do for Rhonda's website a long time ago when she first started her business was I would take a chunk of a chunk of text, big paragraph, and repeat keywords over and over again. Database marketing consultant, response modeling, customer file segmentation, test design, and I would just repeat it over and over again. And I would open up the HTML code, paste it in there, and made sure the font color was the same color as the background of the website. So you wouldn't see it when you were visiting the website. You would see a big space where there was nothing, but you wouldn't know what it was. But Google would actually read it and see it over and over again. And again, it was easy to do. But today, again, if you get caught doing that, you will get in trouble. Here's the BMW example. This was their German website. So they stripped them out of the German index for a full year because they were redirecting visitors to a different page that had a lot of pictures than what the Google crawler saw. So totally a violation of the webmaster's guidelines. And they were punished. Here are three other examples, which I'll have you guys read and comment on in a discussion forum. J.C. Penney, right before the 2010 Christmas holiday season, got caught buying backlinks. Um, and again, just not a good thing. So again, what was happening is they were like, when you type in skinny jeans and other like fashion sort of terms, they were rising to the top on um, search engine results because they were doing a lot of spammy stuff. Again, they got busted. And I think Google moved them to page four or five of search engine results. And let's get real, you might as well strip them out of the index, right? Nobody goes to page four or five of search engine results. When was the last time you went past page two? Um, Overstock.com, slightly different. 
what they were doing is they were approaching universities and saying, hey, you know, if you link back to us, you know, we'll offer discounts to your students. Now, Google kind of figured out that they were doing something a little spammy here because to get a .edu to link back to you is going to be a really good thing, right? Really good thing to have a .edu website linking back to you. So I guess Google noticed that all of a sudden they got a big increase in a lot of .edu websites linking to them and then they, you know, getting all this juice and their SEO was going up. And I guess Google just did not like what they saw. And I guess they smelled something rotten and they went back to Overstock and said, uh, uh, uh. Now, again, what you could do is you could say, well, why didn't the .edu websites know enough to use a nofollow tag? And again, let's get real, you know, most universities aren't going to know anything about SEO or SEM. So I'm sure they knew nothing about the, the no follow tag, but that's what the .edu's could have done. And I think that's what they figured Overstock should have been doing is telling the .edu's to say, oh, and don't forget, use that no follow tag, you know, because we don't want any problems with Google. So that's probably what transpired here and why they punished Overstock as opposed to not punishing the colleges. They probably finished, they probably figured the colleges really didn't know any different. Um, and then lastly, there's another one here you could read on the floral websites. We're all buying, again, backlinks as well and trying to game Google just right before Mother's Day, which was kind of funny. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Oh, sorry, my bad. One more thing here, one to mention, is the other things that Google does pay attention to with respect to SEO is how old the HTML page is, so keep it fresh. They know the last time you went in and updated it, so the older the information on the page, the less important Google's going to view it. Also, they pay attention to how quickly the page loads its weight. Again, probably not as important as this was a few years ago because bandwidth is so quick now, but again, they do pay attention to the weight of the page. Also, name your HTML files smartly, um, so Google pays attention to that also. So, for example, here is the URL for a article titled Search Engine Optimization, 17 Tips for Better Page Rank, and you can see they put that right in the name of the page. Very smart. Now, again, on Rhonda's website for Drake Direct, all the articles I wrote, I was calling them Link Article 1, Link Article 2, Link Article 3. Not a good idea from an SEO perspective. I should have been naming them the data warehouse, your key to more profitable customer data, .html. So the seven elements for SEO, backlinks, definitely the most important. Good keyword strategy, good density of keywords, page titles, headers, bolded text, description tags, and image tags. And you know what? I think I forgot to talk to you about what a header tag is. So before I let you go, let me mention that really quick. So header tags are what drives the subject of the page. So it's an H1, H6 header tag. It just basically tells Google the main themes of a web page, much like the title and subtitles of an article. So instead of using larger font size to get the data revolution and impact on higher education to be bigger, I suggest you use the H1, H2 sort of header because that tells Google that that is kind of the subject of the page. So there is the code. On there, it's just the H1 and then slash H1, the beginning of the header, H1 header tag, and the ending of the H1 header tag, and you just stick the subject right in there. Okay. I have a little bit more on header tags if you want to understand a little bit more about their importance with a YouTube video right here.